decade ago, I decided I wanted to build myself a proper workbench, and this is what I came up with. This is a beast of a workbench. I love this thing. This is quite literally the oldest project that I still have from my old shop. And of course, not all of the joinery in this bench is exactly ideal. I have all kinds of things that I added over time just out of necessity. And to tell you the truth, I think the only reason this bench has lasted as long as it has is because of the sheer number of screws that I have holding the top together. But I like it, because it's mine. It's something I built in the earliest days of my woodworking, and it means so much to me. But sadly, I have to get rid of it. I need to make room for a new workbench. A workbench that suits my current needs. I need to make a proper, solid top, hand tool workbench. Welcome to Sunday! We're gonna go get some breakfast. Yep. You hungry? Some of these still won't fit to the planer, so I'm going to have to knock down the high spots. What I got. I got the four legs, and this is going to be a beautiful tabletop. I'm gonna piece this beam together because I wanted it to be a full two feet wide. The rest of it all worked out pretty well. That took way longer than I thought it was going to. Hi. Uh, what do we have left to do? Make the apron. Oh, Just a little bit. Planer stopped working when I was running through a thick piece of material. I didn't trip the breaker, there's still power going to that. The switch is still good, I checked that with the multimeter. 
I think it's the motor. I don't know if I screwed it up or maybe there's a reset somewhere. There is a reset on the front of the machine, but that doesn't seem to do anything. So, looks like today I'm a hand tool worker. So I got the top all glued together, now I'm going to have to plane both sides, which means tons more hand plane work. Yes. But luckily Lucy's here to help me, so yeah. we should be able to get this done in no time, right? Yeah, because he won't do it alone, because he needs somebody to help is me. Yeah.
one here ended up really, really flat, so I'm not gonna have to do anything to it, but this one is just the tiniest bit pronounced, so I'm gonna hit that with the hand plane. I was being a little bit too rough on it. A bit broke. I finally found a bit and a bushing that match each other. That took a little while. But now I'm gonna finish running out this first little mortise. I guess it's a mortise. <laughs> I do most of the time out here. I just make stuff. I like to make stuff.
make some quick dowels for pins, and I decided on using some of this, I think it's mahogany, I got out of an old, um, I think it was an old shelf or something, but it's beautiful wood, it's really clear grain and everything. All I need to do now is just round these over on the router. Now, I always see, seem to have the same problem whenever I do this. Near the last cut, I always have it roll over on me, so what I decided to do this time is just to leave a little bit of square reference on the end, so when I run it through, I'm not going to run it through all the way, and that keeps my reference on both my fence and my table. And so far, it's been working pretty well. is I'm trying to get rid of this little lip along the edge of the bench. I decided to leave it a little bit proud because I didn't want to end up having to plane the bench to match this if it ended up low anywhere. So I just left it just a little bit tall so I can shave it down nice and flat. figure out what I'm gonna do with this old bench. I gotta move this bench from right here to over here. I tried. I really tried to get rid of the bench. I just can't get rid of something that means that much to me, something that spent that much time in the shop. So it's gonna find a new home over on the garage side.
represents where I came from, then this bench represents the direction I want to start taking my woodworking, starting to refine my abilities and become a better woodworker all around. And it all starts with the right base. I didn't know it at the time, but building this bench 10 years ago was the beginning of something amazing that I had never done before. Before that point, I'd never stuck to a hobby. But once I built this for my woodworking, I, I, my passion for that hobby just exploded. I never want to lose that sentiment of learning something new, of pushing myself at places I've never been before. And so what I've decided to set up here is the beginning of my metalworking area. I want to start building this into an area where I can work metal and, and make things and learn to weld and plasma cut and all of those amazing things. It's definitely going to be a slow process, but I'll start to develop that over time. So you'll definitely see some metalworking videos coming up soon. Well, thanks for watching my video. I had a real fun time building this bench. I have never built anything this intense. This took a lot, a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Well, thanks for watching the video. I had such a fun time making this bench. I've been wanting one of these for so long and I finally have it. So I cannot wait to uh, dirty this thing up with a little bit of work. Um, one thing to note, uh, when you're building a bench this thick, um, over the first two seasons, over the, the first two wet, first two dry seasons, you're going to get a lot of warping in this. No matter how you build it, if you're going to build a solid top uh, table or bench, it will always warp and twist on you. So I didn't worry too much about getting this thing perfectly flat. Believe it or not, it'll actually take about two years for this entire thing to finish warping and twisting so that I'll come back, re-square the legs, re-flatten the top, and at that point, the bench will be done. So I will see you guys in two years. Catch it in. While I was editing this video, I decided I wanted to make one little change to it. And this idea comes from comes from Wrangler Star's channel. If you're not watching him, you should. It's a really good channel. And something that he says, and something that he always says on his channel is that in a project, sometimes it's the tiniest detail that can make all the difference. 